Welcome to News Channel 8, I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the stories we have for you tonight. Traxco gets robbed, reacts from the special session, and the AA Baseball League playoffs gets on the way. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. TV8 News is brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn. In our top story, Traxco Incorporated was robbed for an undisclosed amount of money. We do not have many of the details at this time, but as soon as it becomes available, we will share that with you. In other news, yesterday a special session was called by the governor. The Virgin Islands Legislature changed a 270-day borrowing bill. It passed in June to partially fill this year's budget deficit and to help the territory's hospitals. News Channel 8 camera was at Henry Roseland today to get reactions from the senators on the special session. We hear from Senator Alicia Chucky Hansen. I think it went very well, but I know that the session began by a some sort of plan to actually uh, call the session as requested by the governor and the Organic Act and then simply take the whole bill and send it to committee and then kill it. And I had to work very, very hard to highlight the significance of the employees at the Juan Luis Hospital, the people that utilize our hospital, those that are there now and those to come. And certainly I had to highlight that last painting that bring consciousness to my colleagues that these employees, many of them are not even aware, were not gonna get paid. When I heard from Dr. Griffith, Sometime for the morning, I think either at three or four o'clock, where he wondered if I was up and apologized. He said, no, I am up. He was concerned. He couldn't sleep because he knew he was facing the day with a payless payday for everyone working at the Juan Luis Hospital because he has an also an obligation to pay the vendors and also pay the taxes, the withholding taxes that they draw out of people's check by law. I told him, go ahead and pay the people. You know, everyone will have to understand, and I will back him up, because all these employees, they have mortgages, they have car loans, they have students who either send away to school or bring back home from school. And therefore, not one of those employees can afford not to have a payday. And it was affected also by the three paydays, I believe, in May. So I, I, I had to remind my colleagues that not because we are getting paid every payday, we must forget people who are struggling and who cannot afford to go without a payday. And also the issue relative to the party, Joseph, is that those things have already been approved in the past. All that needed to be done yesterday was the structure in order that the party, Joseph, can continue to progress. There are so many people on St. Croix that have no jobs, including all of those that got terminated from Hovensa. Many of them have left the territory with their families. Some of them have left their families behind while they go to try to make a living. There are many that are left back that have nothing to live on. We have to stop putting off for the next day, for the next week, for three weeks later, and put jobs and put our people to work. It is highly necessary. It is highly recommended. I highlighted that. In conclusion, I am very, very satisfied that I was able to uh, insist that they do not shortfall the issue relative to our hospital, the Royal Lester Hospital, as well as the uh, Juan Luis Hospital. And this passed favorably, and it got all the votes except for who were uh, absent. It was a major turnaround to what they intended to do to the beginning, which was to send it to committee and not uh, act on it yesterday. And now we hear from Senator Terrence Positive Nelson. I thought the Senate tried to meet the governor uh, halfway. I, this governor really has no excuses for why we're in this financial predicament. The governor has received almost every, besides this one, every borrowing bill the governor sent down, he got approved. 
and we've seen borrowing to take us to fiscal year 2014 already, and we still continue to borrow to get us to 2014. The Senate, I think, made them, I can't speak for everybody, but my support behind the Section 1 was because I clearly do understand where we are now. I don't appreciate it, and I don't appreciate being led down this road by this governor, and here he is on the way out again, needing to borrow, and my concern is there are some other monies to be received from the settlement, etc., that actually may come in before the end of this fiscal year, but with them having the discretion to know and not disclosing to us, it is to their advantage, and we all know what we feel about the governor's uh, uh, MO, a modus operandi, as it, as it relates to uh, borrowing. I also want to say that borrowing should be part of the, this should be a larger borrowing. It should have been enough to cover a debt restructuring and economic stimulus. As you know, I've been talking about the Virgin Island Infrastructure Reconstruction Plan. Borrowing has become necessary right now, but to borrow to just pay bills does not make sense. You have to borrow to invest in the infrastructure. I was in objection to borrowing just to pay off utility bills. Those bills will reoccur if we do not get a handle on our energy situation. And it is to me, to our advantage, to go ahead on and secure a location in the name of St. Croix Renaissance Park and work towards uh, constructing the new power plant immediately. That is the solution to our energy situation. We need new energy plants. Uh, 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 um, energy supplements, which uh, we call these contracts to the energy providers, they are only supplements to allow us to transition. They are not energy solution. And uh, I, I, I want to see what's going to be next now. The, regarding the Pauly Joseph Stadium, we all felt as senators that a new administration is about to come in. We are about four or five months left in this current administration. And any major projects uh, to be constructed, any other bonding for construction, should go to a new administration. Governor De Young has had his chance. I do not believe he's, be he's been the best financial manager, and we've seen the result of that to this point. So he got the $50 million. Let's see what occurs between now and October 1st, or between now and December 31st. Meanwhile, the Juvenile Investigation Bureau detectives on St. Thomas and St. Croix needs the community's help in locating two missing minors. Juvenile Investigation Bureau detectives on St. Thomas and St. Croix are asking the community's assistance in locating two 17-year-old missing runaway females. The girls were reported missing recently on St. Thomas and St. Croix. However, their cases are not related. The missing females have been seen recently in the territory. Terika Alexander was last seen on July 14th on St. Thomas, and Rash Jahida Escobar was recently seen on St. Croix. Both girls are familiar with both St. Thomas and St. Croix and may be on either island. Despite being labeled as frequent runaways, Youth Investigation Unit detectives are concerned with the welfare of Alexander and Escobar. Detectives said it is imperative that the girls are located as soon as possible for their own safety. Terika Alexander is six foot tall and weighs 190 pounds and she has short black hair. She's originally from St. Thomas. Ras Jahida Escobar was born on St. Croix. She is five foot five inches tall and weighs 120 pounds. She has a brown complexion and short hair. Both girls may be wearing a weave, a wig, or extensions to alter their hairstyles. If you have seen or know the whereabouts of Terika Alexander, please contact the Juvenile Investigation Bureau on St. Thomas at 715-5540, 715-5542, or you can call 911. If you have seen or know the whereabouts of Rash Jahida Escobar, please contact the St. Croix Juvenile Investigation Bureau at 778-2211 or call 911. The police remind the public that anyone who harbors and or assists a runaway minor may face criminal prosecution. Well, one St. Croix activist has taken to the streets to share his displeasure with the recent GERS board decision. You know, I'm a retiree and I, I want to stay on the system a little longer. That's why I'm out here this morning trying to get some signature due to the fact that the, uh, the board see in their business to give a company that need to grow grass uh, $15 million of uh, the retiree's money. If they go and Google the hole in the truck, gang, they will see that we shouldn't be giving these people not even a red cent. So this morning, I, I'm here trying to get some uh, some people 
retirees, government employees to sign the, the petition to take into GS board, not Mr. Nibs. Mr. Nibs work for the board, the board, to tell them, please don't give this company a red cent. The board approved the loan. I, it seemed like nobody did a background check on the individual because if they did a background check, they would have been running from them. They wouldn't even let them get close to the door. They will lock the door and run in the back. So I'm here saying, as a retiree, a young retiree with more years to go, knowing that GS is going to go under, i trying to save it a, a day longer. The period don't want it to be a next carambola because I tell them they were our own carambola. They said they're in the business and owning the hotel. Now they're trying to fraud me and tell me that now they own it, let's make it a three star, a Marriott flagship. I just say it's a Marriott failed ship. They keep putting money into it. They over, they, they spent 15 million to get the bandit them that run, and now they're over 21 million dollars invested in it. So we own it now. So I ad advise the retirees to go down there and spend our weekend, enjoy some of our property. An army of one. Stay tuned, we have more news straight ahead. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Welcome back to News Channel 8. And now here is Alexis Barnes with your Caribbean report. Jamaica is investigating its first possible case of the chikungunya virus after an individual who traveled from an infected country fell ill earlier this week. The individual was screened for the illness privately and tested positive. A sample was sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency in Trinidad to confirm. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kevin Harvey released a statement saying, This does not indicate local spread of the virus and we continue to monitor persons living in and around areas visited by the individual. There is currently no treatment or vaccine for the virus and to date 28 countries in the Caribbean and Latin America have reported cases with 5,227 confirmed. According to Harvey, the mosquitoes responsible for the virus breed in water that settles outside. At the Curacao airport, there were two men killed and six other people wounded Tuesday night in a drive-by shooting, according to police. Reports say a car drove in front of arrivals where an occupant opened fire on a group of people. The two fatalities were Curacao residents. Those injured were hit by flying bullets, included a taxi driver, a mother hit in the leg, a woman in a wheelchair, and a Curacao beauty pageant runner-up. The Minister of Justice said in a statement that police are already on the trail for the perpetrators. Researchers have found a new species of aquatic mites in Mona Passage off the coast of Puerto Rico and are naming the organism after singer Jennifer Lopez. The pontarachnid mite was collected from almost 70 meters below the surface, the greatest depth these mites have been found, and named Litterachna lopeze. Biologist Vladimir Pesic said the singer's music kept the team in good spirits while writing the manuscript of their findings and watching the World Cup. This has been Alexis Barnes filling in for Cynthia Graham for your Caribbean Report. Cynthia's wardrobes provided by Morella's Boutique in Village Mall, Barron Spot. Thanks, Alexis. Now here is Mr. Bogle with your Entertainment Report. Thank you very much, Junior. Good evening to everyone. Welcome to this weekend edition of your entertainment report. And definitely, we want to tell you looking some place to go this coming Saturday. It's brought to you by Flawless and F Square Promotion as they present dynamic duos. On the card, you're going to have super tracks. You're going to have DJ Cal with Select of Red Lion songs out of St. Thomas. You're going to have Syndicate, the Ultimate. And you're going to have Silver Star with Select Culture. And of course, that this Saturday it goes on at the line. Early bird fifteen dollars free gift set giveaway to so the best female duo team. So please go and check that out. Also, this coming Sunday, you're looking some place to go. Definitely, you want to check out um, the Spratlet Beach Bar and Grill down in the Cane Bay area. Of course, you could get something good to eat here. They have some very good, nice 
um, delicacies down there, so you need to go and check them out. Some new stuff on the menu. Also, definitely, you want to enjoy the music by Top Shutter Sounds, okay? And keep keep it um, here for more information in reference to the crab races coming up for the rest of the summer. And then also, Saturday, GBZ Entertainment presents to you Summer Vibes Beach Party. Tell a friend to tell a friend that this Saturday to be exact with DJ Carl Selectric of DJ Trooper and Big Cat Sounds. It starts at 11 a.m. cash bar and food and sale. So definitely you got a lot of stuff to do. And then we want to of course tell you about Coach's Bar down on the west side. It's brought to you by the Caribbean Unity Group. It's newly and improved. Remember you got to come on out and it's in a safe environment. It, you could be there from Thursdays to Sundays and enjoy good music some nice mix of drinks and also um, some of the best DJs from the version that is play at Coach's Bar and Night Spot. So please check it out, definitely. So those are the things happening here in and around the Virgin Islands for this weekend. Remember, whatever you do, please try to do it peacefully. And if you drink, as I always say, just don't drive. Back to you, Junior. Sounds like a lot is going on this weekend. Stay with us. We have more news straight ahead. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Now here he is, Mr. Stephen Koo Francis, with your Sports 411 update. Thanks a lot, Junior. Last night at the DC Canagata Ballpark, the playoffs got on the way in the Double A Baseball League. We had a rematch of last year's championship game in the first round as the Hurricanes took on the defending champs, the Vikings. Will the Vikings look anything like the champs as the Hurricane Miz easy work of them beating them 11 to 5 while belting out 11 hits. Ouch! David Samuel he got the win while a Johnny Dowdy got the loss. The top it is for the Hurricanes with Tony Cruz he went 3 for 4. For the Vikings it was Odingo Davila he went 2 for 4. Folks the action continue on Friday as the Titans goes up against the Yankees at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday the Hurricanes versus the Vikings at 3 p.m. Then the Yankees versus the Titans at 6.30 p.m. Then, if necessary, on Sunday, the Vikings will face off against the Hurricanes at 3 p.m. Then the Titans versus the Yankees at 6.30 p.m. Go on out and show your support. That's look at Sports 4-1 update. I'm Stephen Kuh Francis for News Channel. Back to you, Junior. Don't go anywhere. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather. Coming up next. Your weather. And here's a look at your local weather. Tonight will be partly cloudy with a low around 79 degrees. There will be a 20% chance of rain. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy in the morning, followed by scattered thunderstorms in the afternoon. High around 86 with a low of 79 and a 40% chance of rain. On Friday night, expect a partly cloudy evening with scattered thunderstorms after midnight. On Saturday, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 85 and a low of 79. On Saturday night, late thunderstorms with a 40% chance of rain. Sunday will be a stormy day with scattered thunderstorms and wind during the day and isolated thunderstorms at night. It'll be a high of 86 and a low of 80. Monday will be windy with a chance of thunderstorms during the day and in the evening with a 30% chance of rain, a high of 86 and a low of around 79. This has been Alexis Barnes with your Channel 8 News Weather. Thank you for tuning in. That's all we have for local news. Do not forget to like us on Facebook at WSVI CHA. And you can also follow us on Twitter now at WSVI TV News. I'm Junior Garcia and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. TV8 News was brought to you by Total Excellium. More protection, more miles. Total, you know where to turn.